Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of Diablo 2 on Hardcore. Now, where were we? Let's see. Oh yeah, true pain, death, despair. Right, Act 5 Hell, that's it. <laughs> but anyway, as is customary for us in recent times, let us delay the inevitable for just a few moments by gambling a couple of amulets. This time from our good and trustworthy friend, Nilathak. And see what we can get in our eternal struggle, in our pursuit of this dream amulet that we've been after this whole playthrough. Oh man. <laughs> that wasn't too pretty to look at, but of course that was the expected result, and we'll keep trying. But now we have to steel ourselves. We have to mentally prepare for the perils of this act, and there are many. Basically, in Act 5, almost every area has the potential of being a true danger zone. It kind of depends to some extent on what enemies decide to show up, because especially in those outdoor zones, there's uh, quite a large selection of enemies that can show up. And so the difficulty levels can vary quite a bit as well. Especially in these first two areas, there's a lot of different archer types that can show up, so right from the get-go we have to be on our guard and keep our distance, be on the move and just not get complacent and not teleport into such hordes of monsters. Even these quill rats that of course are always deceiving in their in their danger levels. Yeah, you can see Emilio's health dropping quite quite a bit. Even he with his supreme physical resistances his defense against missiles, even he is not doing so hot. It's also because of that poison. But anyway. Uh, of course, as always, we could just teleport straight to Shank and get to him in a matter of seconds, but we will fight our way through this act. Oh man. See, this is what I was talking about. All these ranged attackers. We will have to stay focused here. If we want to fart our way through, just like I said, I think a good kind of uh, mode of conduct that we can implement here is to uh, always kind of uh, let's let's finish this guy Bane Bang first. But uh, yeah, we can always stop by whenever we see a, a barbarian kind of making their stand and fighting against the opposition. We can always help our buddy out. And uh, that's going to be our cue to stop, but it seems like I am even more bloodthirsty than that. Okay, I've seen a dude. All right, let us help him in his struggle, in his valiant fight. Okay, here's a guy that's not really interested in fighting, it seems. <laughs> He's just running for his life. Well, let's help him. All right now, I guess he was ashamed of his cowardice, and then he charged into battle. Knowing that we're looking at him, <laughs> he didn't want to look like a wimp. All right, here we have a battle going on. Emilio, get out there. Feel free to engage the enemy. <laughs> Anyway, I would like to scavenge some healing potions along the way. Oh, man. Okay, our my morale has just dropped seeing <laughs> that barbarian falling on the field of battle. But anyway, perhaps now our morale can increase after well, okay, we've seen an, we've seen enough of these barbarino deaths. I think, but perhaps killing Dakfarin who is always immune to both of our elements which marks it a job for Emilio. Oh man, let us just get through this a bit. Alright, this can improve our morale here, improve our mood. Our success over our first super unique. Oh man, the bloody foothills are already proving to be quite quite a pain but we have to press on as always we have to keep moving I 
But yeah, I, well, it, it should be expected to start off strong in here and not have it easy. All right, no barbs fighting. You know what? I'm going to leave you be. But here I've seen a special group and there's a barb that's sure to die in his confrontation against these guys. But, well, maybe. Maybe let, let's try to keep him alive. Emilio, block some shots. Tank for us. Tank for our group. Our impromptu adventuring party. Oh yeah, he lived at least for that one moment. I think this is the same guy, still going, still going strong. Anyway, there is much to be done in this episode. Hopefully we can survive to see everything I have <laughs> planned out. Because that is of course not a certainty. Well, there was there were some barbs to help out. But yes, we will have some item related decisions to make and we will discuss those in due time. In due time, my lord. Yes, of course. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It, it begins already, huh? Oh, look how many guys we have here, man. Now we have a better ratio of, like, saves versus casualties of these barbs. Perhaps we have now gotten into our groove and we are more effective in everything we do here. All right, but let's let's leave those groups and perhaps make our way to Shank, although I think I've seen Barb somewhere. Oh yeah, here he is. You know what? Let us use a full rejuve here. Let us use them liberally. Because this is it. This is definitely it. Okay, hell rune for our troubles. Always useful, just not really in any of the scenarios that await us in this playthrough, I guess. Alright, well, you know what? Let's just not get out there in such terrain. Oh man. Alright, we see from our quest prompt that our confrontation with Shank is imminent. With Shrek the Overseer. Let's just get this done. Let them roast in the fires of our meteors. <laughs> All right, Shank is down. We get some potions for our troubles. Polished wand. All right, let's keep on moving. Let's just deal with some of these guys so they don't sneak up on us from behind when we deal with Eldritch. All right, there. Let's hope for a better selection of enemies here in the frigid highlands. Let's of course deal with Eldritch. All right, we have some gremlins. Those are always a welcome sight when playing as a sorceress, as they shouldn't be too dangerous. They should be pretty harmless. Of course, when playing a melee character, they are always annoying, but here it should be it should be okay for us. All right, we we do have some some healing potions to keep us going. Okay. All right, perhaps this is going to be a bit of a reprieve in this area. The danger level should be a little lower, well, quite a bit lower. Although we see that two types of that melee enemy, some of them are Fire immune, and there was that cold immune guy, I think he was a remnant from Shank, and we might see that again uh, when encountering Sharptooth Slayer. But yeah, it seems like as long as we maintain our focus and be careful, we should be... we should be good in this area. Oh yes, these guys respond well to some frozen orbs. Oh yes, let's get to the task of rescuing these barbs. That was just an imaginary gate, <laughs> I guess. 
but uh, our mission is underway. They were able to somehow get away. I think the collapse of that gate, maybe I saw it wrong, but I think it, uh, it was quite delayed, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, not gonna pick up that long sword. Let's just keep on going. And is this uh, our man, Sharptooth? I think it is, because we have these cold immune ice boars. And we have Mr. Mr. Sharptooth Slayer. Get over here, you coward. What is up with these enemies that just don't want to fight? Not even enemies, but it, uh, it seems like this affliction has affected both sides of the conflict earlier on with that barb and here with Sharptooth Slayer he was also not too eager to confront us but uh, anyway it seems like these barbs are also don't seem to be too enthusiastic about the prospects of regaining their freedom they're like oh well vacation's over huh <laughs> but anyway since we have such a nice selection of monsters let's try and look for a special group, maybe, here and there, before we progress to the next zone. Okay, here we have something. Not sure if it's going to be that nice with those charged bolts, but... Let's pay attention to Emilio's health, as always, but even more so, perhaps. Seems like he's doing fine, man. No worries. Emilio, you are stronger than I thought. <laughs> than I feared you might be. Okay, let's just get some stuff in there. Let's keep on going. One more special group, perhaps? They are hiding from us, man. <laughs> Alright, whatever. I guess this is, this is the message from the game that we just can't look for easy stuff to do. We have to press on with our unwavering courage and dedication to our mission. We can't just be satisfied with taking the easy way. Anyway, I back the Unleashed, is Unleashed, and now we will be able to press on and see what kind of danger level we can expect here. Alright, some Skelly Mages shouldn't be too bad, at least for us. I, know, I don't know about you, Emilio. <laughs> oh, Amplify Damage. We haven't, see, we haven't seen you in a while. Will you fit? Oh. Of course, you're going to be problematic, huh? Let's go back to town anyway to get rid of that and do some management. What do we have here? Oh, okay, this one wand we've had in there. But soon enough we shall get some cash. Let's just deposit a few things here. Just like so use some of our scrolls here and replenish them while it's on my mind. Hello. And also we can hand in some quests. Like the barb rescue. Alright, be silent, Mr. Keck. <laughs> and here we're also going to speak at length to Larzak because I want to showcase one more thing when it comes to him. Uh, now, of course, when it comes to his socket quest reward, uh, this is going to be one of those uh, item-related discussions that we will have at the end of the episode, I think. I want to save it for later, because I will present an analysis without a clear answer, and it will. I would like to elaborate on that in peace. Of course, this requires us to survive until the end of the episode, but let's maintain that hope and move on to the next thing. Uh, one last thing I wanted to showcase here is his comment after we successfully rescue the barbs. Since your arrival, Cain has spoken of your deeds in the Southern Kingdoms, defeating both Mephisto and Diablo. 
At first, I scoffed at his tales, but I'm finding them more believable with every passing day. So see, this is yet another proof that Deckard Cain is just the MVP of this series, you know? Like, he's been hyping us up here in this foreign land, just proving on, like, innumerable accounts that he's our true friend, always has been, always will be, and Diablo 3 never happened, end of story. <laughs> anyway, now we can move on. <laughs> and see what awaits us. Any juicy groups, perhaps? And we still haven't discovered all the monsters that spawned here for us. Seems like multiple types of mages, perhaps. This is going to hurt for Emilio, but at least not for Nisharin, so... I won't complain. <laughs> and tough luck, Emilio. Alright, gremlins, nice. After that uh, first like rough introduction to this act in the bloody foothills, it seems like there is a little bit of a counterbalance in that regard, although as you could notice there, even these seemingly not too tough monsters can offer some burst of damage. Okay, especially when we have some some groups. Milio needs a Helio in the form of a full rejuve. And we need to be on the move, as always. Especially in such situations. Alright, what do we have here? Maybe more gauntlets? Now I'm kind of realizing that I forgot to pick up that worm hide. And it was just over here, right? Okay. Oh, man, as always. You know what? Just for my peace of mind. Alright, you're nothing. You're worthless. <laughs> I'm not so swift to remove this Amplify damage as I usually am, because, of course, we're dealing with magical damage. Or various types of elemental damage here, so not a big problem. Here, of course, we're on the lookout for our waypoints. So exploring quite thoroughly, plus, you know, I won't mind some special groups showing up still. It's pretty fun going here. Reshi. Give us that amplify damage once more. And burn in hell. <laughs> right, there we go. Now I think I will Colossus Girdle, yeah, just for the novelty. Let's check that out and I will clear out this curse uh, before we go into the caves. Let's check out what we've got here. Not much. But we will be on the lookout for some money. Our need for gold is not yet... is not yet... Uh, what would be the word? It's not yet expired, <laughs> I guess. Because there will be one last gambling spree if we survive to do it, of course, but uh, there is something in the works on that front, but of course I'll elaborate later. We basically don't know when to give up when it comes to gambling. <laughs> Our addiction is too strong. All right, here I like seeing these guys 
what's the third monster? Okay, more casters. Not too bad. Perhaps the game is going to uh, then counterbalance again these this like easier sequence we've enjoyed here in the Frozen River, and it's going to just spawn the absolute abominations from hell <laughs> for us. Just so that some kind of, some semblance of justice can be maintained. Alright, we have our waypoints secured here. Alright, we have Frozen River, but let's, let's uh, <laughs> procrastinate <laughs> for a moment before we go in there. I am not looking forward to visiting that place, let me tell ya. Maybe let's uh, also do... The next portion, get the next waypoint and kill Bone Saw, and then we'll come back to the Frozen River. Uh, and here, I think I was talking about our unwavering courage. <laughs> of course, here we're opening ourselves up for these casters shooting at us from our flank. And that's just a kite shield. Alright, anyway. Alright, here we go. Ooh, fanaticism aura. Good luck, Emilio. Because <laughs> I think we will want to fight that. don't want to hang out in the proximity of these undead guys though. You know, everyone got... Whoa! Ho -ho! All right. <laughs> now the game is providing us with some spicier <laughs> opponents. Whoa! All right, that, that got some adrenaline going. And I guess that's the... Uh, that is... The sign from the game that we shouldn't linger. We should just move on. Let's not press our luck that much, I guess. Okay, large charm we do have in there. And before the guy gets up, or any of his minions, or else, we're out of there. Okay, bone saw breaker. Let us maintain the necessary distance here. <laughs> All right, there we go. And towel room, whatever. I'm not going to stay in there to sort our inventory for just a towel room. I can let that go. <laughs> right, these Viper Claws with their bone spears that pierce through Emilio and can hit us. That's never a good thing to encounter. Seems like we have dealt with yet another group. Well, now we have. Also, we should be meticulous when it comes to clearing that amplified damage. Let us not open ourselves. Oh. <laughs> that was nice. I wanted to telekinesis the, the stash, but uh, I accidentally opened the belt and actually drank a full reju there. Nice, always showcasing the proper gameplay as you can see with me fumbling around with the controls. Why do I always have to be rusty when I play this game? Oh man. I think I am still recovering from that shock of uh, dropping so, <laughs> so low on health. A little bit earlier. All right, let's let's scout around. Not a special group. Why am I fighting them? Well, let's let's not invite any nasty surprises. All right, this is what I've been looking for. You know what? I think it's time. I think, unfortunately, it is time to experience hell in its purest form. <laughs> Frozen River. Oh man, let me just get situated on my chair here properly. 
before we do this. All right, no fear. Fear is the mind killer. Let's go and see what we're dealing with. All right. Oh, what I've already seen is not... Man, why do I keep doing that? I'm just swinging my mouse all the way down to the edge of the screen. All right, now, as a comment about the danger zone, it's not too cool, but it it could have been worse. Because we could have had Gloams here, and fortunately, we don't have them. The absolute, I think, money combo here <laughs> to get in the Frozen River is to get the Viper Claws, the Gloams, and either the Undead Charger guys or uh, these Succubi. So we got like two out of the three nasties, but you know, as long as we maintain our focus, which has been a problem, it seems, <laughs> so far. You know, let, let's let's try to be positive. Let's try to look at the bright side here. Of course, one bolt we take to the face and like one fourth of our health is gone. Such is life. And of course they can curse us. So even if we go and remove Amplify Damage, we can be instantly afflicted with it again. At least we have these casters as the third monster. Oh man. I would like to fight some guys here and there are some special groups. Which of course my instinct tells me immediately to just stop and fight. I think we will do so, but let's do it methodically. Let's not rush out there. Especially since we have guys attacking us from every angle. Alright, we can take advantage of this frozen river. Some some more stuff, yes. We have another special group. Two more, I think. Just need to take care of Emilio, take care of our, ourselves as well, and just not do anything stupid. That seems to be the challenge with me. <laughs> when it comes to rushing head first, into some dangerous situations, and we're out of healing. Let us replenish that. Let us replenish our supplies. And while we're here, let us catch our breath and sort our inventory a little bit more. What do we have here? I should take that back to sell it. And we can take one more rejuve with us. You know, I just, I will sell that wand just so it doesn't clutter the ground here. And yes, where were we? <laughs> Let's get back into the groove. And there's a guy we want to kill. And Emilio, my dude. Anyone else? All right. You know, let's just clear out this Amplify damage one more time and try to look for Herr Frozenstein. <laughs> Whoa, jeez. One quick charge, even during teleporting. You know, as tempting as it is, I think I'm going to skip this evil urn and not tempt fate. I think the game has provided us with signs that we should not try our luck too much in this episode. You know, we know that 
this is the passage to Frozenstein. It cannot be any other way. We have our quest prompt in there. We are coming upon Mr. Stein. <laughs> Frozenstein. Alright, there he is. Emilio, hold strong. I have my full rejuves at the ready for you, but it seems like it wasn't even necessary. Because apparently we were able to engage them in groups. But still, they are pestering us with their bolts. But I think the worst we have dealt with. <laughs> Alright, now let's inspect some of the the loot here we can scavenge some stuff doesn't matter let's just conclude our business here and be done with this area forever <laughs> oh man okay i think looking at the time and at our situation here i think it is about time to kind of catch our breath this is going to be <laughs> enough uh enough excitement for today i guess and we still have some well two issues of uh item uh, nature <laughs> to discuss because uh with some uh, rewards that we've uh, obtained here we have unlocked some possible switches uh, of items that are now open to us of course the first issue is the uh, socket uh, reward coming from larzak uh, here, <laughs> basically to talk about this reward, uh, I guess, a little bit more broadly, now that this is the last one that we have left. Uh, of course, normally when you play on Battle.net, you would, you know, use that precious uh, socketing opportunity to min-max, to optimize your gear, to add a socket to a good, unique, or set piece, uh, to further boost it with a nice rune, like an armor rune for all resist, or an ist rune for magic find, or a shale rune into a weapon to increase its attack speed, or maybe an impressive jewel, like facets, you would put in there. Of course, that's not a choice that's immensely impactful to begin with, it's more for optimizing, and we don't have the resources to make it as good as it could be, I think the best we, we could do here is um, put a socket into our skin of the Viper Magi, that normally you probably wouldn't consider for <laughs> that either, because it has quite a low all resist uh, roll on it, but uh, we could put a socket into it and uh, put a perfect ruby for 38 life, I guess. That's hardly spectacular, but it would be, you know, an all right boost. Of course, uh, that option, uh, another benefit of it, I guess, even if you don't have the right, you know, super good runes, is that you can, of course, uh, empty the socket later on with a Horadric Cube recipe and just uh, put something better in there instead. But it doesn't matter right now for us. And of course, the second option is what we've been doing so far. And uh, I've had been certain uh, for a long time that we would do so again, because we have this... Uh, this Thresher that we've obtained earlier, and uh, Threshers go up to five open sockets, and I thought for the longest time that we would use uh, the Socket Quest reward to give it its maximum amount of sockets, which would be five, and then make the Obedience rune word in it. Normally, of course, it would be a little bit wasteful to use that kind of reward when you're playing, you know, in a season, uh, unless it was an Ethereal Thresher, I guess. Uh, but, you know, normally you can just farm for socketables with the right amount of sockets already, or you can use the Horadric Cube recipe to roll the uh, amount of sockets you want for your purposes. But for in the context of our run here, it would be acceptable, of course, to once again use this reward uh, in such a capacity. And Obedience, of course, is generally a pretty strong weapon for a mercenary, and would be an upgrade in a few areas. So, like I said, I had thought that it would be a no-brainer, but recently I've thought about it more, in more detail, I guess. I weighed the pros and cons and came to the surprising realization that making the switch from insight to obedience would actually not be such a tremendous result. Now, before typing that angry comment, <laughs> hear me out. Because <laughs> let's break it down and consider the upsides of obedience first. Uh, of course, uh, it would improve the damage of Emilio. 
because uh, first off it would be an upgrade from an exceptional to an elite polearm, which in and of itself would be nice, and then of course obedience is a more damaging rune word than insight. However, for Emilio, his damage is more of a luxury, it's far down the list of priorities for him, and he only deals like single target damage, uh, so being able to do a little bit more, uh, you know, it would be nice, of course. Uh, and But, you know, the main issue we are concerned about, of course, are the monsters uh, that are immune to both fire and cold, but he's been doing fine in that regard. Uh, we would be able, with such an upgrade, to defeat such monsters, you know, a little bit faster, but he's, he's doing fine. It's not a necessary upgrade. Um, plus, I also have some other ideas to boost his damage for some future situations that might occur. Uh, now, the other big benefit of Obedience uh, would be fixing Emilio's long-standing issue of his resistances not being maxed out. Uh, obedience rolls from 20 to 30 all res, so it would max out or almost max out his situation here. But uh, kind of surprisingly <laughs> as well, uh, this playthrough, I expected something different. But uh, whenever there's elemental damage flying around and we're careful with Emilio, he's not doing too bad either in such scenarios. Uh, I don't think we've had him die too many times, if at all. Uh, I know he died off-camera when I was farming the Ancient Tunnels on Players 3 uh, earlier on. But generally, he's he's been doing fine. His survivability is okay at this point, provided that you know we pay attention to him. Uh, then there's also the 40 FHR which would be pretty big for him. It would improve his hit frames by 5, I think. Uh, so, of course, you know, another nice benefit, although not necessary. And one more thing about Obedience I wanted to touch upon is that minus 25% enemy fire resistance property that it has on it. You might be thinking it would be a significant damage boost to our fire spells, you know, reducing the fire resistance of enemies. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. It's a personal debuff for the wielder that doesn't affect his allies. So it would boost Emilio's fire damage, but not ours. So that property is entirely irrelevant in our analysis. Now, of course, now we have to also consider uh, what would be the cost of giving up insight and switching it in favor of obedience. And that, of course, would be the loss of the meditation aura. And... Here, you might be thinking that meditation is just a convenience boost, kind of a quality of life, you know, that we don't have to care about our mana, but it's actually far more significant than that, because it eliminates a whole aspect of managing our character. Because having virtually unlimited mana means we have one less thing to track and keep an eye on, and as a result, we can pay more attention to our mercenary, for example, his health, his situation, and of course our own character, and be more focused on maintaining our health and uh, so on. We can also maintain this kind of situation on our on our belt with more healing potions that we still have to resupply quite frequently. And even with meditation, sometimes on long teleport streaks or fireball spams, uh, you know, even then I still have to drink a mana potion occasionally. So without meditation, of course, we would be back to full out using mana potions. And um, basically... Uh, you know, having to divide our attention into one more thing. And uh, it is a goal for every character to eventually be able to disregard mana. You know, whenever you are a physical uh, damage character, you use mana steel for that purpose, to just basically be able to spam your attacks and without having to concern yourself about your mana supply. And for casters, of course, with bigger uh, mana pools, you know, when you have battle orders coming from your call to arms on Switch and, you know, just better gear with plus skills coming from those, you know, standard charms you can expect to have on in a season like Annihilus, Torch, Skillers, you know, that kind of thing. Of course, your uh, regeneration, even without meditation, is going to be huge, such that you don't need mana potions either in that kind of situation. So... Uh, basically, the, the core of the issue here boils down to the fact that I think it's just too early for us to give up meditation and uh, lose that immense boost to our mana regeneration. Uh, so, yeah, the conclusion will be that, you know, losing meditation is a bigger issue than, you know, those few minor upgrades for Emilio. Uh, that's, you know, if we could afford them, it would be nice, but I'm not so sure about that kind of course of action anymore. So, uh, well... One more thing is that we could still make obedience for special occasions, 
but for such scenarios we still have Kelpie Snare and we could switch, uh, get some Crushing Blow that, you know, Obedience would provide. We can get some Crushing Blow from other sources and I've been planning for that, especially when it comes to uh, Bale's Throne Room. So more on that uh, if we <laughs> manage to get there. Um, so could make Obedience still, but I'm not sure. Maybe for the novelty of it, uh, we might be able to just add a socket, probably the skin of the Viper Magi, and just put somewhere in there just to showcase something different in the playthrough. Not that, of course, it's some kind of a, a big, uh, you know, unknown option or anything, but it would be some variety in the playthrough. Because, yeah, having said all that, I have to admit that I am left without a strong plan here. Uh, like I said, my course had been set for making Obedience in that Thresher, but now I'm not so sure anymore and I think I'm leaning to the other option. But anyway, that's issue number one. I'll think about it, and before starting the next episode, I will use that reward on something so that we can get that over with and, you know, have that boost, even if it's not that spectacular, and we can just keep on going. Uh, so, you know, perhaps if we succeed with our run, then our choice will be vindicated, and if we die, we'll have something to blame for our failure, failure I guess. <laughs> Always looking at the bright side, see? But anyway, uh, the other issue uh, fortunately is much more straightforward and it's simple of course we've gotten that uh, scroll from mala that boosted our resistances by 10 so now we're basically uh, 10 over uh, where we need to be and uh, that means that we can give up some resistances coming from our gear and uh, you know this of course opens up some switches some of the most direct ones would be to switch this ring with 15 all res to this one with just five so we would be on point there but uh, here we would only gain 27 life, so it's even less meaningful than what we've just discussed with that perfect ruby uh, socketed into the skin of the Viper Magi. But uh, a more impactful decision would be to try to get rid of Mahimo Curio, that also gives us the 10 all res that we don't need anymore, and then of course 10 attributes, which means 20 life coming from Vitality, and basically 20 life because we have to invest 10 attributes into Strength in order to be able to wield the Spirit Monarch. Now, uh, adjusting for that Strength will be... Here we also have a couple of options, but the decision will be simple. But just to note, we still have that last uh, respec on Hell from Akara. We could respec to adjust the attributes of ours, but adjusting for just 10 or even 5 Strength, as I will elaborate on in just a moment, uh, would be quite wasteful if it was the other way around that we would have more strength that we needed to uh, to have uh, i would be open to that of course and i would do it uh, to uh, you know put more strength into vitality instead and get more life but uh, here we basically have an easy option of just leveling up we're decently close to this next level up and in between episodes i will farm uh, to level 85 so that from that level up we will get five strength i will put those five attributes into strength uh, and then we will be able to either farm a whole other level up which i don't think i will do because we still have that one large charm that gives us five strength and of course it's going to suck to use a large <laughs> charm that only gives five strength and there's nothing else on it but we do have these two spaces here that he it will temporarily occupy because Again, of course, if we get that far and we defeat the Ancients, uh, this will grant us another level up, and then we can put another 5 points into Strength and get rid of that large charm so that we can at least have a little bit of a convenience here to be able to pick up a full Rejuve quickly with Telekinesis and whatnot. Uh, so, uh, I think in order to replace Mahimo Curio, uh, we have this stable option of uh, this amulet right here with plus 3 to fire skills. Uh, it is going to be our backup, basically. It is uh, if we don't uh, gamble <laughs> anything better. Basically, the last thing to discuss is that I will, uh, in between episodes, and of course I will record that uh, and provide a summary of that, uh, we will... Uh, I will gamble um, many more amulets, as much as our gold basically allows. I will spend the majority of our leftover gold that's not only in cash, not only in the 700,000 uh, gold that we have, but we also have a page with some items that will sell for uh, at least 25k gold. And most of them are going to sell for 35,000. So we do have a little bit more than that. I will spend most of that gold to still uh, do one 
bigger gambling session and then we we will see if we can get anything decent there and even if we don't we have that plus three to fire skills amulet that we will use then uh, because it will be a big boost for our for our fire damage because of course it will improve our fireball our meteor and our fire mastery by three so it should be noticeable uh, against monsters that are vulnerable to fire damage so yes this is uh, everything <laughs> i wanted to talk about uh, I hope you enjoyed that exposition if you didn't uh, fall asleep during it and uh, enjoyed the episode. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.